Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Iowa soccer supporters. I'm Ben Brackett, along with my good buddy and co-host, Blake Sievers. Sebo, what up? Ben, we're again in the lair. We've kind of made this our new home, haven't we? I like it in here. It's cozy. Things are getting cold outside, so, you know, that's important uh, to stay warm. Yeah, so anyway, um, speaking of staying warm, what a warm podcast guest we had. Uh, was super pumped uh, to have who we just had on. Yeah, the interesting thing will be, you know, we used to have these um, these pros give us stuff, and we've done a couple um, Zooms, right, with Katie Naughton, um, who sent us a signed shirt jersey and a pair of shorts. So I'm really interested uh, if... CR, yes, that's what, or what are you, this guest is gonna um, gonna send us. Yeah, so uh, really interesting guest for us because um, just due to age, um, I think this is somebody who I never really uh, saw play or grew up knowing a whole lot about, other than that he was playing professionally. Uh, Kyle Zobeck out of the Iowa City area, I think specifically Coralville, went to Iowa City West. Um, currently uh, professional with FC Dallas and the MLS and. Uh, the backup down there but uh had a, had a nice little string of games it sounds like last season and um he's been an integral part of the team for a long time now so uh, i don't know what you got seems yeah it was it was like you said never met the guy um heard of him but never really met him but i saw he's played pro for a long time played with dallas for quite a few years now which um we were talking probably the longest tenured iowan to ever play in mls which is pretty cool very cool uh, so yeah, like, uh, why don't we just hop into it? Uh, like I said, one of a very warm guest. I think, I mean, I was just really enjoyed chatting with him. A super cool guy, uh, really, uh, generous with his time. So I uh, mean, we just, uh, hop right into it and uh, say hello to Kyle Zobeck. All right, Kyle Zobeck, welcome to the pod, Kyle. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing well, Ben. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're uh, we're excited to have you. We're we're really racking up the esteemed guests these days, and uh, you're certainly not slouch. But it's super funny. Um, well, here let let me just before I get ahead of myself, I'm I'm excited because we haven't we haven't done a pod in a while. Steve's always asked the same first question, um, based on whether or not you listen to this pod, which I'm assuming you don't. Uh, Charlie Bales. Um kind of warned me this was coming. So <laughs> I had the opportunity to listen to a few. I listened to Lance's. I think he was the last one. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if this is my first time on a podcast. That's the first question. Well played. Um, you may actually be the first person that's just like shut Blake out there. Really? Yeah, I think, and like, I got a follow-up question. Like, what do you mean you don't know if this is the first podcast you've ever been on? Well, so I remember I, I did a, like a phone interview a few years back, um, and I just don't know the medium that it was distributed in, if it was just like a radio thing, or if it was like saved and recorded as a podcast, so that's why I don't know. And that's fair, but at least you've got a reason. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I guess the, the thing I think is so interesting about this is because of uh, your age and the fact that you're from the eastern side of the state like we i don't i'm, I'm certain that our, we've never crossed paths i'm pretty sure you've never crossed paths with blake before um and we've sort of pride ourselves on feeling like we've got like the pulse and we know a lot of guys but uh fair enough here we are so we're really excited that uh you took some time to talk to some strangers yeah man i'm happy to be here uh, i mean i i like i said charlie bales gave me the heads up about you guys and was able to look into all the good you guys are doing and so i was happy to to join you thank you um well so then i usually like to follow up with uh just sort of asking you about your uh your origin story um and it's funny like if uh you know the little bit of like light research that you can do on mls players um it doesn't talk a lot about like where you're originally from and what you started out like where you started playing so Give us a little bit of your, your Iowa background and uh, how you got into the game and what kind of took you on the path. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm from Coralville, Iowa. Um, 
and I started playing just like rec league soccer when I was real young, like three, four years old. My parents have pictures of me playing tiny top soccer at the Coral Hill Recreation Center. Um, and then, so my, my older brother um, played. Uh, Brian Zobeck, he won a couple of his, uh, state championships with West High um, back in the day. Um, and so I, I mean, I don't know if it was because of him, but I mean, I think, you know, little brother, older brother definitely influenced kind of the path I, I went down. Um, so by the time I was in like second grade, I think I, I kind of started playing club soccer. I was playing up a couple of years with uh, Iowa City Alliance was the first club I joined. Um, I think Andrew Knight was one of my first coaches. Police, yeah, officer. Okay. Police officer now, McKnight. I, I've heard, yeah, he uh, is no longer coaching. Um, but yeah, he was- isn't that, isn't that funny to think of him as a police officer? Yeah. I just think he, of him as, you know, Scottish soccer coach. <laughs> oh, what, a, what a great guy. Yeah. So, uh, were you playing goalkeeper at that point? Um, so I would play, like, as soon as we started playing with goalies, I would play, like, half goalkeeper, half on the field. And, again, I think that plays, too. My brother was a goalkeeper. Um, so I think that's why I kind of got into it. But I played on the field all the way up through high school. Like, I wasn't just playing goalkeeper. Um, although that was arguably probably my my best position. Um, and even in college, I actually played part of a couple of spring games in college at like center back. Um, so, but anyway, going back, um, yeah, first club was Iowa City Alliance. And then I don't even remember, I was too young to remember why I switched to ISC um, at like U11 or U12 age. Um, but made that switch. My brother was playing for Iowa, the Iowa soccer club. Um, and I, I'm assuming my parents just, it was a convenience thing. How much older is he than you? Mm, three, four years. So he was, he was actually uh, a senior in high school when I was a freshman. Okay, cool. Um, and so we, we never played on the same team. He was on varsity my freshman year. I was on the fresh soft team, but, uh, we were walking the halls together and I got to travel and watch all the varsity games and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. To play. Did you play other sports? Sorry? Did you play other sports? I did. Um, I, I played a little bit of everything growing up. Um, I mean, I, I just dropped off sports one at a time, but I played baseball, basketball, football, soccer, ran track. Um, but by the time I was a junior in high school, the only thing I was doing was soccer. Um, yeah, so I know that's a little bit of a, a different path from what I think people are used to hearing nowadays. Like now you just hear uh, about guys who are like, you know, all in on soccer from the time they're, they're young. And, but I wasn't like that. I was, I mean, I was just a super uh, outgoing, you know, kid wanting to be outside all the time and just running around. And so I would do, do any, anything and everything. Um, who, so at ISC, Cookie, obviously, I'm assuming was a coach, was um, who else were kind of some of the, we like having guys kind of drop some old, old school names on us. Yeah, so Cook was, was running the club um, and he actually never coached me, um, aside from me doing like their super skill sessions and stuff like that. He was never one of my coaches. I had uh, Matt Wilkerson um, was a coach for a year or two. Uh, I think he's he's over in Indiana at a, a smaller school, um, smaller university head coach. Uh, Brad Stiles um, was one of my youth coaches. And Homer Screws as well. Um, Corbin Stone was my brother's coach, and I, I was around a decent number of those training sessions and would get to, you know, like jump in from time to time. Um, so, yeah, those are the, those were the coaches that I had uh, growing up in Iowa City. 
Did you get, were you guys any good? Your club team any good? Yeah. So, um, let's see. What age uh, do they start doing the regional tournament? Was that like U13 was the first year you could go to regionals? Yeah, it's 13 or 14. Yeah. 13 or 14. So, we wouldn't know. We didn't, we never won State Cup until we were 14. So, I don't, I don't really remember. Um, okay. <laughs> so, when I switched and joined the ISC, um, there were two teams in my age group the Explosion Royal Knights. I remember that. And I joined the Royal Knights. And then, within a few months after I, I joined, they kind of restructured the teams and did kind of like an A and a B team. And uh, my team was the, the Predators, and we ended up winning State Cup. What a couple uh, of teams, by the way. Sorry? What a couple of names. Like, those are like oh, yeah. my son's U8 team. Like, they pick their team name, like the Explosion and the Predators. It's great. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. Um, but, yeah, so we ended up winning State Cup that first year, but there was, we were too young. They didn't have, like, the regional tournament set up. And then we won State Cup the following year, went to regionals. Um, and got absolutely destroyed. Like we thought we were good having won like in the state two years in a row. And then I don't even remember who we played, but in the first game, I think we lost like eight, nine, zero. And it was, I remember like walking off the field in tears, just like devastated, you know, as a 13 year old kid. How many goals did we give up? It was eight, eight or nine. Yeah, they were all yours, huh? Oh yeah, I was in goal for that game. <laughs> demolished. Um, so yeah, that didn't feel good. And like by the end of the weekend, the uh, by the end of the weekend, I think we'd gotten scores like a little more respectable. Like I think the second game we lost four zero, and I think the third game we lost maybe like one zero or something like that. But we just got blind. Um, so that was we, nice. we had that experience as well. Just a little uh, few years before you. Yeah. And then I can't remember. I think we won it a third year in a row. Uh, State Cup, but I could be mistaken about that. I don't know. It's going, going were, you doing, were you doing ODP at this time as well? Yeah. I, uh, I started the first year. You could do, well, actually, the year before, I played with the 89s when they had the three teams for the first year or whatever. I don't remember exactly how it worked. I think they had like an East team, a Central team, and a West team. Yeah. And so I made like the 89s East team um, and like went to Grinnell and, you know, did all that. Um, and then after that, just played with my own age every year. Did you have any regional team? Uh, we, I mean, this is, do you have any regional team success or luck or did you ever make it? The very last year, um, I... They didn't have me play any of the, the pool games during the week, but they held me over and I played really well. Um, and I, I think the only reason I got held over is because the, like the national team goalie for the age was, for our age was like off somewhere with the national team, right? So they just needed an extra number to round things out. And so it was me and I ended up doing really well and they called me up that uh that winter for the interregional tournament uh down at disney where they like play you know the other the other regions um but that was my my only experience and it was a really good experience and i'm kind of getting ahead of myself but because at that time i'd already committed to uh valparaiso university and where i was going to go in college but after that, that weekend, I had schools like from all over the place asking about me. Um, well, well, so then don't get too far ahead of yourself. Go back, talk about like high school soccer, when and what, and then talk about kind of like how you made a decision to like focus on goalkeeper and how that all worked out. And then, and then maybe how you ended up at Valpo and then, then go yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, high school soccer was, um, it was always something I was going to do. I mean, my brother, like I said, had tons of success. Um, well, at West and, and West High, is a, I mean, it's a dynasty, right? Let's, yeah. Who, you were on the freshman team, though? Yeah, so we had a fresh soft team. Um, 
so it's styles uh really good good guy good friend of mine um he like we had like a pipeline of players right coming through so what he would always do was take one freshman to be on varsity and then everyone else would just get playing time fresh off you know um and so our my freshman year it was aaron winkleman who was the he's a center mid like you know bulldog kind of like Old, uh, his brother kyle's uh lived with me in college for three oh years. really yeah okay he played with his his brother played with me and ben way i mean growing up and 84 odp team yeah that's awesome yeah. okay so you know the winklemans there right. we go making some connections i like it um so that was the way that that, that styles kind of operated um and i mean they were my brother was starting in goal um, and he was always going to be the starter so that position was on lock i mean there's an argument that like i probably should have been on the team i think if oh, you would yeah. if you'd ask around but i was also like i, I mean i was tiny I didn't I was say how or how big were you at that age? Oh, I was I was real small, very undersized. It would bio been, says six feet now. So how tall would you have been? I mean, six feet's not very big for a goalkeeper to begin with, right? Six one. So <laughs> <laughs> what's cleats on? What's studs? Um uh geez, I can't even I don't even want to guess, but I didn't stop growing until like I was in college and still growing. So I think when I walked on campus as a freshman at Valparaiso, I think I was like 5'11 and 155, maybe 160. Yeah, it was, it was kind of comical. Like the pictures of me as a freshman in college going up against Mark Holma, right? He's from West yeah. Point, at Loyola. Yep, He's a, he would have been a freshman when I was a senior in high school. Okay. He was he was like a senior in college when I was a freshman in college, and, I played, and it was comical to see like me bat going up for a cross against that dude. He's a big um, boy. Yeah. So what kind of, what style of goalkeeper would you say you are at this point? What style? Yeah, like when you're that that age. I mean, you're not. You're certainly not like the uh, like. Are you? Oh, I, I was like, just flying around like super energetic, you know. Um, so you're the guy that was flying across the goal and like top the top, like okay. Yeah. With you ever Jake Settle? Were you like were you a Jake Settle? Uh, do you remember watching him play? Who would have been Cedar Rapids, but an old old goalkeeper? But yeah, I know, the, I know the name. Um, I think my brother played against him, so I probably did see him play. But I was just I, I was too young. I was in my own little world, you know, not really paying attention. Were you one of those goalkeepers, um, or are you that like the ball goes towards you and you just dive anyways to <laughs> make it look great? Uh, when I was a kid, I think my teammates would have said yes. <laughs> they would have been like, "You don't, you just made that look good." I would have been like, "I'm four feet tall. Like I have to be like jumping around. Like this is how I have to do it to make saves." Um, but yeah, they. I was definitely accused of that when I was growing up. So then so good with your feet or what? Sorry, Steve. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, so good with good with your feet as well, or uh, I was decent, but so the big problem for me was like you go to take goal kicks. I'm massively undersized, not strong, and so I have like zero power, um, or I had zero power, uh, so that was kind of a holdup. But like like I said, I played on the field too, so like I could I could play decently well and I was effective like at different positions I think I mean across my youth career I played literally every position back to front so um did that help with your understanding of the game and help you as a goalkeeper or was it I think so I definitely think so um my college coach he loved it when I would play on the field too um so I think it 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 definitely carried over for sure and it's it's I'm not like the best like pro goalkeeper with my feet now, but I mean it's gotten me to the point where I am. So it was it was definitely beneficial for me without a doubt. 
have to have that kind of background playing on the field. So did you like sophomore, junior, senior year, Iowa City West, did you, I mean, did you get the nod like sophomore year and keep it? And then you get, I don't know, you guys won a state title or two, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> hard, sore subject. Um, when, it, when, was there, when was the last time there were four years at Iowa City West and win a state title? Uh, so they, they won my freshman year, but I wasn't on the team. Um, my bad. So, Sophomore year, I played, I split time with um, Doug, oh, what was his last name? Doug Miller? I don't know him. Yeah. Um, and then we, I think we finished fourth that year. Like, we just, we weren't as good. Um, my junior year started. Um Every, I think it was probably every minute. Don't know how many goals we gave up, but it wasn't many. I think we lost maybe three games all year, and one of them was probably against Valley that first weekend of the season. One of them was probably against Bettendorf. Um, and then we lost in the state final. 1-0. Um, Jacob Meisel scored with like 10 minutes to go. Uh, and hey, then, Jacob. What's that? The famous Jacob Meisel. Yeah. Um, and then my senior year, I'm pretty sure we literally gave up four goals all season. It was four or five. And we lost in the state final, 1-0, to Dowling. Scott Wagner, my club teammate, scored the game winner. That's funny. So we play soccer with both. Jacob and uh, Scotty Wags on on the weekend, and so they'll they'll both be very pleased to know that they got a shout out for even if it's just a little high school final. They got they got a little action. Yep. Scotty Wagner uh, wears, wears that NBA jerseys to soccer, like the tank top with like literally like Larry, Larry Johnson, like Alonzo Mourning, just like hilarious. Does he still banging goals? Like yeah. He to? Oh yeah. Shot flex on that. Flex on that. Uh, and you're. Blake's not even giving doing him justice. He's more of a he. He did. You're right. He does have the the Larry Johnson grandma, but then he also loves his John Stockton jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I can that's, definitely. That's great. Yeah, and uh, we actually we we had a we chatted with Meisel before, um, but la this last spring we went to an Ankeny game, and he, they just recently put out like an Ankeny Fanatics top players of Ankeny for all of all time which man they, did they do that in Iowa City no I don't think so I was gonna say that'd be a, a tough list to get on I would think oh yeah yeah the number of guys that have come out of Iowa City that are I mean I don't think a lot of them really wanted to to go on and, and play really after high school or but some of the older players the guys that were um Oh three, oh four, graduating classes. Yeah, um, on down to. I mean, geez, even looking at the guys coming out after me, there were a lot of high level players that were just a couple of years behind me. Um, thinking of Nick Arby and Tanner Schilling, sure. guys who had legitimate um, regional team experiences when they were 13, 14, 15, and like consistent contributors throughout. So yeah, that would be that'd be a good list. So why don't you put that together? Yeah, I, that's not my forte, but uh, <laughs> so so talk about how you got recruited then, because I mean, it's obviously you're playing club soccer, and like I think it's funny because it sounds like we're from about the same era where you know like ODP still was pretty valuable. So if you got you know if you made the regional team, like that was a major recruiting opportunity, and if you went to regionals, that was a major recruiting opportunity. So you know, state cup was important um and there's really only one way to get to those tournaments so um so we totally get that piece so like where where was it that uh like how did you get plucked out of the obscurity of uh of iowa city at you know undersized and light? yeah so i've also got i'd be remiss if i didn't mention i i switched clubs one more time like last couple of years i joined crsa when my um, ISC team kind of fell apart. Um, we had a bunch of kids who wanted to play like other sports and do other things. And 
So we didn't really have a team at my age group that combined a couple age groups. And so myself and uh, one or two other Iowa City guys, we went and we joined the 1990 CRSA team. Um, and so that kind of plays into, I think what started to kind of get me noticed um, was I played a little bit with that 89 CRSA team. Like I went down to Disney with them. Um, okay, so, so that would be like, uh, like when Nick Foster and Scotty Wagner were playing on the team. Yeah, so Nick Foster, Lance Roseboom. Um, yeah. We brought up Ian Christensen too, who's a year younger than me. Um, but I mean, all those guys, Will Martin, Ken Perkins. Uh, Catholic. Was that Catholic. Ooh, Catholic. So goalkeeper battle. Well, no, no, no. So he was like their goalkeeper. But I went with them and like played, I don't know, I don't think we split 50, 50. I can't even remember now, but I played some with them. And like when Cadillac couldn't go to certain things for whatever reason, like they would call me up. And so I would play with them just a little bit. But mostly I was with my own age um, CRSA team with guys like uh, Chris Yossi, Joe Frerichs, Mike Miniachi, Scott Wagner coming over from Des Moines, Alan Winstead, Jake Johnson, Alex Wynn. Uh, oh, who was it? Bill told us about him. Yeah, so he played at Loyola with Scotty. Got it. Good, good central midfielder. Um, AJ Contra. You guys hear that name? Mm -mm. Heard of it, but. Uh, Wisconsin Green Bay in college. Gotcha. So, what, how did you? So, like, what? I mean, it sounds like to me at that time, so compared with when we were growing up, like, you wouldn't, there was not a lot of recruiting in that sort of like, you know, if you weren't getting called by Wisconsin very often, Illinois very often, you know, anywhere in Illinois. Um, but it seems like that in your era, there was a lot, like there were just a lot of D1 programs just picking off Iowans. Yeah, so we, uh, I mean, I think we kind of benefited from the 89 success and like that kind of brought a few more eyes to Iowa and if you were at all like associated with them, I think it, it helped. Um, and, like my team was definitely like we were good. Like that CRSA team, we were good, but we weren't like the '89s good. They were like a class of their own. And so for me, getting into to college, it was a lot of you know I had the notebook with hundreds of you know school contact information written down, and I was just sending off like form emails with a soccer resume and a schedule of tournaments I was going to be at, and I. I my mom, I'm sure, still has it at home, but it was legit one of those spiral notebooks, and it was cover to cover filled with head coaches, assistant coaches, and just all their contact information. We've talked about that, uh, the old book before. Where somebody would buy it, and then you just, like, pass it around. Oh, it was just mine was homemade, like, literally online at home, oh. going to all these schools' websites. Oh, wow. Well, that's and, old school, Zovac. I like it. Yeah. Did it that way. Um, so where were you, where did you want to go? Where was it in your head that you were like, all right, uh, if I, I've, you know, when I, I've made it, if I get to, I don't know, Creighton, Stanford, what was it at that time? I had zero expectations. For me, it was like, I just wanted to keep playing. I didn't know if I was going to get a look, division one, two, whatever it was going to be. So, I mean, I, I was contacting programs like, Western Illinois, I talked to Drake um, a little bit in state. Uh, Where'd you go visit, like official visits? Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, so I went to a division two school, Missouri Rolla, which is now Missouri Science and Technology. Um, for a visit, I went to Valparaiso University, which is where I ended up going on an official visit. Um, and then, uh, I was on campus at Notre Dame for, it was like a whole day with Bobby Clark, but I, I it wasn't like, I don't know if it was official because I didn't stay overnight or anything. It was just part of like a, a day trip after a tournament or something like that. Um, um, what do you think about that campus? Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's awesome. And uh, I went to school about 40 minutes down the road. So um, had friends from there and would, would go there occasionally during the year. Um, but yeah, great, great place. 
And honestly, so in hindsight, that would have been like, you know, the school to go to. But when I was talking with their staff, it was like, all right, we've got four goalkeepers. You coming in, you'd be number five. Um, we've got another guy your age coming in. So oh, it's a position. you're going to be walking on, you know, our starter gets a 70% scholarship. Our backup gets a 30. Everyone else is paying their way. So I was like, it'd be awesome, but let's pay, you know, $70,000 a year to go and like sit on the bench type of thing. And I mean, I'd get a good education, but it's steep, you know? Um, so, and so, yeah, th those are the places that I like really visited. Um, I guess I spent time on Kentucky's campus too, just because I had a, a connection. Matt Wilkerson was an assistant there at one point. That's right. He was there for a few years though, too, wasn't he? I think there's a couple yeah. Iowa boys that ended up there as well. Joey Penny ended up there. Um, Ben Langwood ended up there for a little bit. I, I went on a visit there when I was a junior, you know, when I was a senior and what a massive campus. I was like overwhelmed by it. It was, I mean, it was really cool. I went to like one of their recruiting camps, um, and spent time there. So, um, yeah, I also, I did, I mean, I did camps too. Like, like I said, I went to Kentucky, I went to Creighton's camp. I went to Valpo's camp. I mean, so my college recruiting experience was basically just like all, you know, I wasn't really recruited. It was just, I went to these places and got on their radars and then they would start talking to me type of thing. And like at the end, I mentioned, I got called into that regional uh, team tournament and played out of my mind. And like all of a sudden I had Ohio State calling me. I had Louisville asking questions you know, like all these, these big time schools. And I was like, eh, well, you're a little too late. <laughs> so talk about that process then. Cause I mean, that's, that's a, a tough decision to say, cause you, I mean, you didn't sign right yet. You was just verbally committed or had you signed? I, I, timelines. Yeah. It's, I can't really remember for sure, but Could I think it's verbal. Did you think about like exploring that anymore? Or were you pretty set? Hey, I committed. I'm going like, yeah, okay. I, I was going to go. I really, honestly, I, I made the right decision too for me. Like I, the people at Valpo were amazing. Um, like the team I walked into was amazing. And it was, it was the right fit for me too. Um, like it was, it was a level where I was going to be, you know, able to contribute. And also we were going to be able to play against like some big name teams too while I was there bracket do you remember we went and actually talked to that coach at halftime of the Drake game at like three years four years ago at that yeah so we kind of uh great guy. I don't know if you know but we do like a little game of the week and then we um we go to the coaches and interview them at halftime for like a minute or two and um sometimes we don't reach out ahead of time <laughs> and uh we just surprise most of the, most of the time so we, like, we literally went up to him like, Hey, here's who we are. Here's what we're doing. Can we like, you know, can we get a minute of your time? And he was awesome. He's like, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Like let's talk guys about the half. And he was just super nice guy. And we've had somewhere they give it, uh, give us a, you know, a minute or two and it's just dry. It's like coach speak. But he, I remember he was like, Oh, this is like, I was a pretty good guy. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's been just, the best for me. He's been an invaluable resource. He's impacted so many lives of like young men playing soccer, but then beyond that, I mean, one of the big things at Belpo that he, he brought was uh, the aspect of like community service and like leaving things better than, than when you found them type of thing. And so, I mean, we were, we were out doing whatever we could in the community. His motivational speaking is, second to none like i mean i have the utmost respect for him and i was devastated when uh valpo ended up cutting the program a couple of years ago out from underneath him because he he built that thing from from nothing um i mean in the 20 or 30 years before he got there i think that's when we had maybe had like two winning seasons and he completely just turned it around and uh 
Yeah. I mean, he was just a wonderful coach. Great guy. It's really too bad about uh, the end of the program there. What, um, what did you do? Like, is that something you guys like get, like see coming? Do they give you like a, like, Hey, or is it just like you get an email, like to the alumni that's like, Hey guys, sweet. Uh, we're out. So I kind of got a little bit of an inside scoop on it because I keep in touch with um, Mike and, and some of the people who are still around campus. And it was out of the blue. Like they, I guess they did an audit of the athletics department like a year prior. Um, but it was something like four days after the season ended um, in 2019. They just got like called into AD's office president of the university was sitting there and they were just like, oh crap, the president's here. It's nothing that can happen, right? Like, hey, we're not giving you a raise with the president there. Like, yeah, just completely blindsided. Um, and I mean, they, they gave, it, uh, unfortunately, this is the way it seems that it's kind of going. I mean, Cincinnati, I think, right? Cut their men's soccer program in like 2018, New Mexico cut theirs within like eight years of winning the national championship. Those are, those are all like good programs. Um, so yeah, it's sad that it seems to be the way that, that things are going. It seems to be that money's the driving, the driving force there. Um, but yeah, it's sad because I mean, the university made their statements about how, oh, it's not a financial thing and all that stuff, but it damn well better than a financial thing because otherwise it made no sense for them to cut that team. You're on mute, Ben, I think. Yeah, I'm back. I know. Um, I was just, I was trying to, I wanted to see where, where uh, Mike Avery was at now. He, um, he does he support Wayne FC. I'll, yeah. I'll make it easy for you, Kyle. Yeah, he's the. Uh, that was why I mean, because I didn't want to see and like technical director at, at Fort Wayne, right? Yeah. He was uh, the athletic director for a year at a small school in Western Indiana too. But I think he's transitioning away from that now to just solely focus on Fort Wayne FC. So talk a little bit about your, uh, obviously a successful career at Valpo. Um, but uh... I mean, you played, I saw like what you played some freshman year and then you like redshirted as an injury or what happened and then kind of came back like splitting some time. So give us a little story on what happened there. Interesting, interesting story there. So I, uh, Valpo had three goalkeepers on their roster um, when I committed to go. Um, one of which was really good, um, Charlie Schwartz. He's the goalkeeper of the year for the conference. And then two other guys. And over the summer, those other two guys decided, ah, we're not coming back. So it was myself, Charlie Schwartz. Um, and then in the same week in preseason, both of us hurt ourselves like pretty bad. Um, he tore, I think it was all the, the ligaments in his thumb and like just hang in there couldn't play like and like three days later I broke my wrist um but mine it wasn't like we didn't know it was like broken at the time they're like oh it's probably just a sprain type of thing so I ended up playing every minute as a freshman with a hurt wrist um and at the end of the season we went in for the x-rays and stuff and they're like yeah it's, it's broken um so that was that story did you guys have a backup goalkeeper then your freshman year? Like, what'd you guys do? No, no we trained, we trained a forward um, one day a week to, to be a, a backup goalkeeper. That's, that's hilarious. That's great. Wild. Um, and I mean, this was Mike's second year of the program, very much rebuilding. Like we were bad. So like, I think the first year they won like three games. I think that year we won maybe like four games or five games. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just a wild year. So you had little old me playing against giants like Mark Coleman uh, in the horizon. League. And 
So then fast, fast forward to the, my sophomore year and I redshirted, right? While um, Schwartz came back and, and I think he was the conference goalkeeper of the year again. Um, so that set the stage for the next year. It was, all right, who's gonna play? How are we gonna do this? And what we ended up doing was kind of splitting time. Um, he played, I think he was, he was like kind of our lead goalkeeper. So like he was scheduled to play all of the, the conference games. And then uh, the non-conference schedule, we, we kind of split. Um, and he also picked up an injury. So I think I did end up playing some of the conference games too. Um, but we did much better. Like we were a competitive team. We didn't win, but you know, we were in the mix that year. And then fast forward to the next year now, that was when it was like, it was me, it was my time. Um, we set a whole bunch of program records, defensive records, wins records. We won the Horizon League for the first time um, in school history, the regular season, that is. Uh, we ended up losing to Loyola in penalties. So Scott, and Alex Wynn did it to me again. Um, Kyle, I'm not, I'm not to make this at all about me, but I have a very similar experience with a, a fellow uh, player of mine who ended my high school and my college careers in the exact same, like, except I was not playing goal, I guess. Uh, anyway, okay. anyway, continue. So yeah, that year, that awesome, year was all right? the worst. That year was devastating because we were legitimately good. Like we were good. We, I can't remember if that was the year that we beat Michigan State, we beat Northwestern, we beat like against top 25 nationally ranked teams, we had a winning record. And we played like four or five, I wanna say. Um, and then in conference, we only gave up, uh, I think we only gave up goals to like two teams or three teams. And one of them was an own goal. Like, so literally nobody could score on us in our conference. The only way we were going out, not making it to the NCAA tournament was if we couldn't score goals, which was always our Achilles heel. We couldn't score, we ended up losing the shootout. So devastating, but. Did you get to go, go to the dance at any point during your career? I did not. That was my probably best chance. Um, my fifth year, my senior year, we were again, pretty good. I battled a, a knee injury early on. And so that kind of set us off to a bad start and we never fully recovered, um, but we made it into like the conference tournament. And essentially we played the, the final of it in the semifinal, we played against Cleveland State and we lost to them 1-0. Uh, story of my life, 1-0 games. Um, and they went on and I think it was Detroit it was the team they played in the final. They destroyed Detroit to so get to the NCAA tournament. So, you spend, but, it seems like a lot of time, like, like fighting to like stay in the game and like stick with it and like, uh, right? I mean, it sounds like that's been like a, a theme for you. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, there's never been that like clarity or that certainty that like I was gonna make it ever, you know, or that my teams were going to be like really good. It was always, I've always been on like the blue collar teams that work and just find a way. Not to skip ahead, but like as a, what you're like 30, 31 ish, something like that. 31, maybe uh, 31. Yeah. Uh, like, do you still sort of in your, like, is that still what you're working for? Like to just like one day, well, all of, like one year, you're just going to get the starting spot at the beginning of the year. And like, you're going to just dominate. Like, is that because you're, I mean, you could play another 10 years probably. Right. Gigi did it. It's it's been done before. Guys can do it. I don't know if that's going to be me, but um, yeah, for me, it's always just been I love to play and I I want to play for you know as long as I can and I I just go out and I just try my best every day and that's been like what I've done since I was seven eight years old and it's got me this far. So you must really love to play though. So, I mean, like in a good way. Yeah, yeah, it's. I don't know what it is. I really don't like 
when people try to ask you what it is about like soccer or the game or why soccer why not like football and basketball I don't know I can't put it into words but for some reason it's just like the challenge of it it's always different it's just so fluid like you're never in the same position twice and I mean I feel like I suck nine nine times out of ten but it's just like that drive to want to do better I don't know I think that's like a big thing for me is the, the challenge of it. Um, What's uh, so like as, as a back to your college career and like getting drafted and stuff like how much was academics? I mean, cause like, I assume at no point, you know, knowing that you weren't feeling pretty con like you weren't like, yeah, hey, I'm definitely going to be a pro. What, what were academics like in college? And like, what were you like, as you're finishing up, like, how did it look? Were you like setting up to like, go on interviews and stuff or were you just like driven to like okay I'm just gonna try out I'm gonna find a team I'm gonna stick with it yeah so I was a mechanical engineering major in college um, yeah. and so like when I started school I was like all right I'm gonna play soccer and then you know I'm gonna go be an engineer um and then my junior and senior years started to make some waves like I was ranked like top 10 nationally in goals against average and stuff like that. And so then it kind of became like, hey, you might have a shot here if you want to like continue playing. But again, like you said, it was never like set in stone. So, I mean, I, I interviewed with like Caterpillar, like the construction equipment company, right? And um, I was on an interview with them. And they were like, well, what's one, what's one thing that would keep you from accepting this job? And I was like, well, uh, I might be playing like professional soccer in a couple months. I don't know. But they're like, oh, yeah, go do that. Like, if you, if you can do that, do that. This job will be here like when you finish. Um, so that was kind of. Do you still have that guy's number then? I do, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what's it, you've been out like? Just say, just say you play five more years to make it an even number. You haven't been in the workforce since you were twenty. I'm assuming you interned. I don't know. Did you intern at no. all? Okay, no. so, okay, so I mean, does that play a role? I mean, obviously, you got different experiences, but if you well, go going to mechanical there, engineering, yeah, I I would think it it's going to be a little bit more challenging for me to get into into that now. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge. When we get so um, how did you get the nod from, I mean, so you got drafted. So like, did you go to the combine? Did you, how did how'd that, did you try out with anybody or what was that like? So the whole like process is a mystery to me because I did not get invited to the combine. Um, I got invited to Seattle um they have their own like invite only mini kind of combine that they hold every year they do it in las vegas and they they let some other teams come out and watch too um so i did that in december of 2012 um and actually showed showed well got some good feedback um but then i didn't i wasn't invited to the dmls combine so i actually uh I, I'd won an academic award that had like a $2,500 cash prize. And so I, I talked with my parents and I ended up using that money to go to a, a pay for play combine down in Florida. That was like the two or three days after the MLS combine. And it was one of the most frustrating experiences of my entire life. Like, I mean, I just remember showing up to the fields the first day and like there were some some decent players there. There were like some guys there who were just overlooked, but all in all, the quality was atrocious. You know, it was guys who paid their whatever, 1500 bucks, you know, just to like get their shot. And it was awful. But I did, I did one of those and they I got invited. So that was nice. But there were like 400 people there that just like just signed up, and it was crazy. I was I, I was like, what is this? It was amazing. Yeah. So I mean, I wasn't too happy about that, but I I mean, I 
one out oh. there. Did you just get shelled or was it just not even a so, thing? So, so the level just wasn't good. Like I, no. I did fine. Like I did, I did actually well for me. Um, but I was just like, there's no way anyone gets like picked out of this group. This is, this is a joke, you know, type of thing. Like there were MLS coaches there, like there were goalkeeper coaches there that I knew um, and stuff like that. So I knew that like guys were there watching, but I was like, there's nobody can show well in this situation, like not well enough to like get a contract at that level. Um, but it's funny because then on draft day, I was sitting at a house just off campus um, and I was watching the draft on TV when my phone rang and it was Dallas and they called and they were like, Hey, this is like the admin that's Dallas. Um, would you be interested in coming down to train for a couple of days? And I was like, yes. Called my parents, called them right back, sorted out the flights and I think it was like the next morning early I was on a flight down to Dallas and so like I don't know if you guys remember how the draft was set up in those days it was like rounds one and two were day one and then they had like the supplemental draft was like two days later three days later when they did like three and four and they just did that over the phone so essentially I flew down to Dallas I trained for that next afternoon and then I trained the following morning and then they ended up selecting me with their third or fourth round pick in the supplemental draft. But years later, I come to find out the only reason Dallas knew about me and found out about me was because I think it was Tim Hanley was a goalkeeper coach in the league was at that pay for play combine in Florida. And he called Dallas and was like, hey, I know you guys are looking for like a, a goalkeeper coming out of college. Um, and I think like the best player here at this thing is, is Kyle Zobeck. You should, you should look him up. And so it was funny to me that like something I was just like so down on ended up being like my saving grace and, and got me the opportunity to, to play at this level. Wow. Mm -hmm. Was uh, not to jump super far ahead, but was was Shellis Heinemann, was he coach at Dallas when you were there? Yep. So he was the head coach my rookie year. Um, I mean, he was part of, part of draft. I mean, was he part of selecting you then? Was he? Uh, he must have. Okay. Because I, I mean, it's the technical director, head coach, the assistants, right? They're all working together. So yeah, he was the head coach that, that brought me in. Those guys, he, we, he was at SMU, and, like, those guys were absolutely unbelievable back in our day. Yeah. Um, I mean, coaching legend that he is at the college level. SMU just retired, right, from Grand Canyon University, I think. I think you're right. I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> I, have no, I have no fond memories in Dallas playing SMU, let's put it that way. Uh, did I... Uh, like what's it like playing in like a big market like Dallas? I mean, when you go there and you show up, you're like a baby, right? Like, oh yeah, massive. And you, what you're probably on like twenty eight thousand dollars or less, maybe. Let's see. I think I was. I think at that time, the reserve minimum was thirty five, so it was a little bit better than what we thought at the time. Yeah, so I think it was like thirty five. Um, you're still in Dallas. Yeah. And so, like, my, my rookie year, I lived with uh, a couple of guys, um, a teammate and then a friend of his. Um, and, I mean, I was one of four goalies at the start of the year, one of five by the end of it. So, I mean, I was brought in strictly to, like, grind and, like, just get abused every day. Like, I would be on the field with the goalkeepers half an hour early before training go through the training session and then be on the field a lot of days for like another half an hour to an hour after. Oh, um, whoever wanted to shoot was like, all right, let's go Zobek. That was my job. And I, <laughs> it's funny looking back. I just, I, there were days when I'd wake up and I'd just be laying in bed and I'd be like, 
I don't know how I'm going to like get up the stairs to like eat breakfast, let alone be on a soccer field in an hour and like, you know, playing at a high level. They just beat you. I mean, is that what they just literally worked you to death and were like, oh, it was, it was intense. And like, and part of it too is that at that time you're coming from college soccer where you're only playing two, three months out of the year, right? And then you're in an environment where you play 10 months out of the year like at a level you've never played at before it's step up is is it's really something and it's something that like you just can't be prepared for um you know coming from from such a different system you know were there thoughts of giving it up there were like during the season like i said when i was like you know the days when i was just like oh my god what am i doing but then when it comes down to like the end of the season, they're like, we like you. We want to bring you back. But then you're just like, oh my God, I did it. Let's go. Let's go again. You know? And so I signed on for the next year, but uh, the way MLS contracts were at the time, like that didn't really mean anything, you know, they're uh, semi-guaranteed structure for young guys. So you could be cut anytime up until I think it was like July 1st. Um, and I was, so I was cut in preseason sometime that second year. Um, and I, so I, I think I told you before we kind of started recording this, I listened to Lance's podcast, his interview that you guys did. Yep. He is a hundred percent like dead on the money with the the grind that it is after you get drafted and like you're just trying to make a team and like they just run guys through and then it is brutal the process is absolutely brutal so where where do you think you finally got a little traction or what like where along the way because you wouldn't still be playing if you didn't have some traction honestly i think the thing that's kept me around for so long was just my my like work ethic and my like just willingness to do whatever like i just accepted my role right i've never been the number one anywhere but i was never going to complain about not getting playing time i was just going to show up and if they needed me to take shots after practice i was going to take shots after practice if they needed me on the bench i was going to be on the bench if they whatever they needed i just did it so not not at all to derail us but i'm pretty good at that i just was talking to a uh uh, I don't know, it's, it was like my dental hygienist, and she has a, a kid who, a niece who plays soccer, and she's uh, a goalkeeper, I think, at UNI, so if she's listening, I doubt she is, but if she is, this one's for you, who, and I don't even, I couldn't even tell you her name, but she was going to, she was a backup at UNI as a, maybe they asked her a red shirt, and she was like, nah, this is, maybe this just isn't for me, it was like, strongly considering just like packing in and going home after like, not even a full for full season, you know, it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm sure I'm good better than these older players. Like this is mine. It sounds like you never had that mentality, which is, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to think that I didn't have that mentality, but as a goalkeeper, like you go in and whoever the older, more experienced goalkeeper is almost automatically has uh, more value. And so like, how do you, how do you deal with that? I mean, while constantly, constantly fighting for your job. Yeah. And then, and then not quitting. Like, yeah, for me, like I said, going into college, I wasn't really expecting anything. I knew they had, a, we had a great goalkeeper. It was conference goalkeeper of the year. So I was like, all right, I'll just wait, train. And then when it's time for me to go, I'll, I'll, I'll go. Right. And then, so by the end of college, right. I was, you know, kind of the man I was, uh, I was really good for our team but I I had my best friends on the team a lot of them didn't play a minute like some of them their first minutes were on senior night uh that last season so like I lived with them I watched what they'd been through and so I kind of just took that with me to the next level I was like all right now I'm just starting over can't get discouraged you just keep doing your job you you fill your role on the team and then when it's your time, you, you're prepared. You do what you've been training to do. So, 
Right. And I mean, not to say that I, I don't have like quality, because I think I mean you get, you have to be good, right, to to stick it out. But then also your willingness to you know put up with some stuff that maybe you think you're better than or whatever that kind of just stick to it in this that perseverance you've got to have that without a doubt so you last COVID season was last year was when you had a little run of games right yeah so that was my like big moment you would say I guess in my career um because and I think they had the stat where I was the oldest draftee, like MLS draftee, to make his debut because I was drafted in 2013 and then didn't play a game for eight years, seven, eight years. That's wild. Yeah. So, but that was that was definitely the high point of, of my career to this point was getting subbed on in the, I think it was like the 42nd minute in Kansas City. Um, the only shame was my parents would have been at the game had it not been during COVID. Because like Kansas City, Minnesota, Chicago are like the markets that they can get to pretty easily. Um, but it was a closed stadium at the time. So yeah, got subbed on 42nd minute to make my debut. We ended up tying the game 1-1. Um, and then had a little run of games after that too. Played three more before I, uh, I pulled a muscle during the, in like the 66th minute of the last game um, I played against Colorado. And I was scheduled to start the following game then again, but the caveat was I had to be able to like strike a ball, um, like a goal kick, like normal. And the day before the game, I, I couldn't do it. I didn't have the power. And so that kind of derailed my, my little run last year mentally what did that do for you did it give you like another like rejuvenate you for a while yeah, like, man, I've sure. yeah getting, getting that opportunity was it was definitely a shot in the arm you know um kept me going it it kind of validated all the work that i had done over the last i mean eight years professionally 12 years collegiately and I mean, really over a whole lifetime um just to make it to that, to that level was something that you, I dreamt of, you know, from the time I was a little kid, but never really thought it was like possible type of thing. And so, I mean, I, I've been in the league, right. I've been on teams, but to actually get like to play and to do pretty well and to win games was, I mean, that was a great feeling. So where to now? Like, what do you like? What's the? I mean, so end of we're we're getting into the season. I I'm terrible. I know I'm pretty sure FC Dallas because of the way you mentioned in our pre-interview that they, you guys are not in the postseason. So, um, yeah. So what? I mean, it's it's November. You you got like a month off and six weeks, and you get back to it. Um. So. Let's see. We've got a few days of training um, to finish out the year, and then. How was yeah. that? Be by the way, sorry to interrupt you, but like, you guys are done. I'm assuming you got guys all sorts of different contract status. Like, is it a big joke, a laugh around, even though the se- like your season's done, or is it like surely you're not working on anything functional? I don't so know. it it changes from year to year. So there's always like the the players union. Need- and we've negotiated a collective bargaining agreement with the league. And there's, there are rules in there about when you can train and when you have to like stop training by. And so it changes from like year to year and COVID is completely messed everything up these past couple of years. Um, but the one, one of the things that stays constant is you can only train if you're under contract for next year. Um, and then outside of that, the training sessions, I mean, you get a little bit of everything, right? You get young guys that are like super gung ho. They want to get after it and keep going. You'll get guys who are good pros that put in an honest day's work no matter what, you know? And then you'll get some guys who are like checked out and don't want to be there. But in general, you're not doing anything 
like tactical or anything like that. You're just going, you'll do a warm up, you'll they'll play possession games, and then it's just a lot of small sided type stuff. So it, they the coaches they understand the situation. A lot of them have been through it, and so they know the way that you get the most out of the guys during that time is you just have fun with it and let them play. Yeah, that's mostly what guys want to do, right? They just want to they want to get there and scrap and get a game in. So that's typically how the end of year training has been set up. Um, what, what, what other things? Uh, I, I think I saw that you had been coaching for a bit when you were playing in New York. Um, is that something that you envision being like a, a future for you, or do you just enjoy it as because it's like, well, hey, I, I'm currently an expert. I can certainly offer my opinion, or do you want to continue with it? Um, so I, I gave it a shot when I was in New York, and. Part of that was because I was thinking, well, maybe I'd want to do this down the road. But then part of it, too, is, I mean, when I went to New York um, and played with the Cosmos, you know, I was taking a step down, so to speak, in terms of, like, salary and stuff like that. So part of it was kind of, like, necessity, too, just supplementing income. Sure. Um, but those couple of years coaching kind of made me realize I don't really want to do that in the future it's hard yeah and it's it's a, it's a completely flipped schedule you know from what everyone else has you're working nights and weekends um, and i mean i i think i would i was pretty good at it um i got some good feedback from from parents and other coaches i was working with but i just don't think it's it's really for me um there are other things that i think i would rather do so but i definitely i mean it was it was fun um, and a, a good way to make some extra money out in New York, especially while I was playing out there. Got introduced to a lot of awesome people, made some really good connections. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to end up going that way. I forgot you played for the Menace. Hmm. Right? Oh yeah, we, we glossed over that. So I played for the Super 20 team the summer before going to college. Um, and then Casey Mann called me and asked me if I wanted to play PDL um, after the summer after my freshman year. And so I, I did that, but it was, again, one of those situations where they brought in a goalkeeper. I think he was from Eastern Illinois, who was like a senior. And so it was one of those situations where I was there to strictly be a backup again. Um, so yeah, we made it to the, the quarterfinals, I think that year um and ended up losing to i believe it was the carry clarets which was the um north carolina railhawks the railhawks their second team they're like u23 team or u20 whatever um that was, that was who the men beat in the final this year oh okay wasn't, wasn't they were out of carry north carolina weren't they they're North Carolina, yeah, I don't know. It almost certainly was then. So, but. <laughs> so, yeah. no, 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 and the reason I'll say that is because, so we lost to them. And my assistant, my goalkeeper coach from Valpo was their goalkeeper coach. Um, and I, I remember um, Akira Fitzgerald was in goal for them. Got away with a, like, the referee had a shocker. Like goalie came out of the box. We had played a guy in behind the last line. Goalkeeper literally reached out and grabbed the ball 30 yards from goal. And the referee gave him a yellow card. Referee gave him a yellow card. This guy, Akira, good goalkeeper, ended up making like five like world-class saves after that point in the game. Um, and like Single, he single handed for them that game. So I was, I was bitter about that. And I had to, I had to tell my coach, I had to go back and tell him about it afterwards. But I ended up playing with that Carolina Railhawks um, under 23 team every summer thereafter because I had that connection to them. And uh, I, man, I totally blanked on that. But those teams were some of the best like college age, like talent in the country 
was like playing there because they drew from UNC, Duke, NC State, and like that surrounding area. So like the, I think the team I played on that first summer I was there, I'm pretty sure eight of the starting 11 ended up playing in the MLS. And then the next year, I think it was something similar where it was just like, the, it, it ended up being the best training environment you could ask for as a college player looking to like get better for the college season and then like your path to pro. It ended up being just amazing. So totally forgot about that, but thanks guys for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. well, we got one more, Racket, I, we, like, you'll, you gotta ask it, but uh, he, we're definitely gonna catch him off guard, I think with, uh, with the lat, like our normal ending question, but I don't have nothing I else. You. I know what it is. Oh, <laughs> bad. Bill, we're asking to hear Bill about this. Okay, well, so before we go to last question, um, so to me, sort of a, a little bit of the theme of this has been like, you know, you just, you've been busting your butt to, to stay with this and, you know, you're willing to grind and put in all this work. So we sort of have like two different segments of our interview. We're like we've got the, the Iowa legend series and then we've got the player spotlight and we've been doing younger players to the player spotlight, but I feel like um, we might classify this as a player spotlight due to the fact that like, I don't, like I doubt you quit anytime soon or retire anytime soon. Um, and I'm curious to see like when it is you get your, you know, like you get your big moment and then we're talking like true legend status. Um, and maybe you will be the, uh, the legend of legends. So because of that, and since we're talking then like we made this a player spotlight conversation, just like, you know, talk about, I mean, I mean you've talked about your work ethic and whatever, like, you know, talk about like, what is it like when like on the bad days, how do you get through it? And like, why is it you just keep going? Because you made the joke about waking up and like being like, oh God, I'm going to go just get my, my butt kicked all day for training. But like, that's what you're doing still, right? I mean, even if you are starting, you're still going to get your butt kicked. So like, what, what is it? What, talk about it a little bit. Just give us, give your young listeners a little, a little shout. Sorry, what, what is it? You, well, talk, just talk a little bit about like what it's like when you like, just the grind, oh, like, is, how, like, how is it, how is it possible that you just like keep wanting to do what you're doing? I mean, I think there's, it's that love of the game, right? You gotta, you've gotta want to train. And part of that comes down to the love of the game. And then part of it's um, just that, that discipline and that dedication. So like goalkeeping is it's a lot different, I think, than playing on the field, right? Your the amount of responsibility is, is just a totally different beast than it is for, for any other position on the field, right? Forward, you miss a chance. Ah, well, no one's going to blame you. You'll get another one, right? If you're a goalkeeper and you let the ball go in the goal, like, that's it. That's your moment. You blew it. Everybody, like, looks at you, you know? So you've got you've to be built a little bit different. You've got to want that responsibility. You've got to shoulder that responsibility. And, and to get to that point where you're comfortable enough in those situations it comes down to the hours and hours of work that you put in that grind that you put in day in and day out like that is very much a necessary part of being successful in my mind i mean well you you're talking, talking about being built different you're the one that's sitting here and you've done your research on all the answers to uh, uh the questions you're going to ask you so yeah, that probably says a little something. I mean, I, a good I, suppose so. I suppose so. Always be prepared, right? So how prepared are you for this last question? You're going to ask me my uh, top five from Iowa and then my top five players I've played with. <laughs> All right, Steve. For a five-a-side team. That's, For a five -a -side. That, that's, to me, there's a little interesting. Everybody has their own little play and like the big debate always is go ahead Kyle the one thing you don't clarify is this like five aside to like small goals are we playing like pugs or are we going to like big goals the mini pitch so oh so like a futsal yeah and so bracket what do you think he's gonna go sweeper keeper and include himself or not or that'll be the debate won't it I'd like to think he would we'll find out I mean 
I thought we had. I, it. I, I swore off indoor soccer years ago. Like I will never, ever, ever do that again. So we can, you can. Many pitches are outside. So well, whatever that style, like futsal, indoor soccer. I swore that off years ago. Like I will not, never take that kind of abuse again. That's just guys teeing off as hard as they can for five yards every chance they get. Would you rather play five aside on an eleven v eleven field? No, but I'm t- like when we play five aside in training, a lot of the times we're playing on like a field that's. 30 yards long, full goals. Uh, it's not one touch and smash it as hard as you can because you're so within range. Yeah, I, but it's different because there's like a big, it's a full size goal. So there's a lot more goals scored, but you're also not taking up the whole thing where like you're what they're aiming at. And so the thought process then is just hit it as hard as you can because that's your only chance to score. Okay, so those are, that's a, those are fair points. Um, okay, so give us... Give us your, uh, who are your five though? Who are you playing with? Okay. I got to take, I mean, the first two picks I think are easy. It's Lance, who is for my money, the best player I was ever produced. Um, Lance Roseman and Ian Christensen. Taking those two. I'm going to take Ken Perkins, who was on the 89 team. And I played with him in college. He's just, I mean, solid. So between him, he'd be holding down the back a little bit more. Lance, kind of that six defensive role. Ian, a little bit more playmaking. Um, I'm going to take Scotty Wagner up front. Ooh, swag bag. And I don't know. Ooh. I think I think I have to put myself in as like, but I'm a, I'm amending your like mini pitch. And I'm gonna make it like what I'm envisioning for like full size goal, thirty yard field, like what we do in training. And I'll put myself in as like sweeper keeper. Fair. Otherwise, Scotty might have to go out. I'm taking the nine, and we're putting in like Andy Holt or Jordan Tatum can roll one of those two. <laughs> um. What I just am like, can't believe I didn't take note of this before. So what's, uh, what's it like having the uh, L train in the squad? You uh, are you a big, I mean, you must be a Pepe fan or Pepe, Pepe fan. I'm a fan of anybody on my team who wants to bang in 13 goals a year. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> You're welcome. Anything. Probably not in training. You probably don't like him very much in training though. Hey, whatever he has to do to score <laughs> goals in games, I'm okay with. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it's been great watching him develop over these last couple of years. Um, so, I mean, we signed him when he was 16. Um, I played with him a little bit on, like, our reserve team, our North Texas SC team. when They won the championship, uh, or we won the championship in 2019. And then, uh, I mean, like, just to see his skills uh, get that much sharper over these last, like, 12 months in particular, it's really been something special to watch. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what he does in the future, whether he's with us moving along or if he's overseas. Um, I think he's got a, a pretty high ceiling. Let's hope so. Right. Who's the uh, – well, well, good segue, Bracket. Will he make the uh, all-time, all-time team here for five aside that he's played with? We'll find out. I, I can't put him on there yet just because he's got the high ceiling. I mean, you're forgetting who I've played with, I think. Okay, so I'm like... Um, Raul. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fine. Raul Gonzalez. No big deal. Um, Marco Senna. Number two. Peter Lutin. Number three. Peter Lutin. Peter Lutin. Um, he's my assistant coach at Dallas. He was my teammate in Dallas, my rookie year. Um, but this guy was, uh, like just on the outside of the French world cup team back in, oh shoot. What year was it? Um, I mean, the nineties, it must've been right. He was 98. Yeah. Wasn't that the year they won it? 
Yeah. So, yeah. I, I'm forgetting. But anyway, world world class player. Like played with Ronaldinho when he was when they were at uh, shoot, where was Ronaldinho before Barca? PSG. Where was he before PSG? I don't know. Yeah, my, my history, my soccer history is not on par with what it should be. But anyway. But we we believe you. Okay, so Peter gets in the Peter squad. Rocky, Marco Senna, and then I got to throw in a defender. So I think I might have to put in Matt Hedges. Current, current teammate um, who is absolutely legit in small-sided. Like we we play small sided uh, every couple of weeks. We do like a tournament um, in training, and like we literally take a trophy out to the fields, and like we have our media team like take pictures of the winning team. This dude does not lose at small sided. His team wins every single week, um, and he's just I mean I mean he's one of the most underrated players in, in MLS, without a doubt. Um, just his longevity and his consistency in the league. Uh, I mean, it's unmatched. And I, he's a former national team guy as well. All, MLS all-star. So he's definitely, he earns that spot as, as uh, top five, you know, especially for a five-side game. Are you making it? Who no. Let's see. Another guy. Goalkeeper. Best, goalkeeper. best goalkeeper you've ever played with. Best goalkeeper I've ever played with. Man. You're just like, good Lord, I'm never going to be able to do that. Actually, I don't know. Honestly, I didn't even think about this, but I was thinking about all the other guys. Like, <laughs> I was going back through who who's going who's gonna to be on the field. Um, but Think, I think I have to put – actually, you know what? I'm going to go change it. I was going to say Chris Seitz um, just because that dude, I mean, he taught me, like, everything. He was, like, my mentor my rookie year. Um, just taught me everything about being a pro. But I think I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to go Ryan Hollingshead, who is our current uh, left back who has played goalkeeper – um, in MLS, like he had to get subbed in when all the goalkeepers were out. So I'm really like do sweeper keeper with Ryan Tom, Ryan Hollington. That's great. Yeah. One, that's easily the best five aside team we've ever had that um, on there. But also, it's like the, it's also the oldest too. Like I, I think that's the other part that's pretty funny. Yeah, I I definitely didn't get to to play with those guys in their in their prime, but I mean. Dude. That's how good they are, right? Like, yeah. Even out of their prime, those guys were special, and just getting to spend time with them around them, it's like they operate at a totally different level. I can only imagine. Well, so uh, you gonna look us up when you get back to Iowa at the holiday? The holidays? Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Did I see you guys are doing a? Uh, uh get together in like a week or so we are are you gonna be in town i don't know my thanksgiving plans haven't been set yet but if if i'm heading back that way that early i'll, I'll definitely let you guys know lance oh, said he lance said he would be there he's coming he's gonna be there yeah yep. i haven't seen that guy in a long time so i might have to i might have to make a real effort to get there Love it. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you in a week or so. Yes, yes. Um, hey guys, thanks for having me on, Ben. Like, appreciate it. It's been uh, it's been fun for sure. Awesome. We really appreciate your time too, Kyle. All right, Steve's so good interview. Um, I mean, very prepared, wasn't he? He was. He's done it. He's uh, he probably did more research than us. I love how he had his he had his little five side squad like all picked out and he had but his subs he, there just in case. But then he did it I right. Know. Like he thought he did, and then it was good. That was a good laugh, a good chat, and um, I don't. Guy was super cool.
be awesome. Yeah. Uh, before you know it, we're going to have a mini pitch in Iowa City, and Kyle's going to be uh, the face of that. So stay tuned. Um, Speaking of face of that, like if people want to know, uh, look at us, um, jump on YouTube. Yeah, check us out on our YouTube channel. Um, also on our social media, we're at KIF Soccer on Facebook and Instagram, at KIF underscore soccer on Twitter. Um, you know, stay tuned to all that good stuff. We're going into the season where, um, you know, it's sort of like getting to the holidays, right? So we're going to be doing a little recap. We're going to be trying to check in with some of the, the stories that we uh, were following earlier in the year. So um, I would also say, because we love it when people sign to our DMs, if you've got any ideas or things you'd like to talk about or hear about, hit us up. I think you uh, summed it up best there. All right. Good shout out to, uh, to Kyle Zoback again. Thanks. Thanks for his time. And uh, also to all the teams that we're going to tag in it, including FC Dallas. Um, let's go.